so excited. We have Chef Josh Kacon from the amazing restaurant Lore, which I am completely obsessed with. Lore Fish Bar and Lore Barry Fish Bar. Company. Okay, by the way, I call it Lore just because like I'm so personally close with it. But <laughs> we're joking, right? Yes. I am. And Barry Meat is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite spots. There is no place I like know. it. And I have him in my new kitchen, and he's going to show us how to cook some Which is very food. nice, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. I designed it all myself. Not really with Lexi. But that's the same thing. <laughs> but the whole thing is, he is unbelievable. He's an unbelievable chef. He's worked so many places. He's worked with David Burke. Who else, Josh? Just wow, what, what, what did you read up like, on yes, you? I read up, I quit. Somebody I, did her homework, yes, I, I did. Tell you. I did. You worked everywhere. I mean, you know, with Charlie Palmer. The Charlie Palmer. Wow, restaurant. yes. Yes. So, yes. Charlie Palmer, with David Burke. I traveled David abroad in Italy, Spain, Germany, and France. Yes. And now I've settled here in New Jersey, so I yes. get close to you. Yes. And come over and cook you guys lunch at least once a week. At least once a week. At least, like least, else else at least once a week. And, and we're going to talk about everything else, pivoting in COVID. But I mean, you have the two. Most weeks. importantly, what is the name of this podcast? Oh, Caviar Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget. So you can't not show up a little bit of beautiful I know. caviar. The huh? Black Diamond Caviar, mm -hmm. I just want to give them a Black shout. Diamond, thank you, Ray. Thank you for sponsoring. I know. This is some yes. unbelievable Kaluga. Look at that stuff. Yes, Kaluga. And by the way, we're just going to, I like highbrow, lowbrow kind of things. So just a nice dollop of caviar on a potato chip. Ooh. I do not, I like to use the good chip, which is like a fancy version of a Pringle. And then I you take that. a little bit of sour cream and I put a little plastic bag so you can just kind of pipe it on. Right? Sour cream and chive. I mean, this is such a good idea. Right? Caviar on scallion, a potato chip. A little scallion, a little scallion. And just like that, you got a perfect hors d'oeuvre. I love that. We're going to do that. I mean, how easy is it? Okay, that's for me. I'm going to eat one right now. I mean, I'm always afraid I'm going to get food in my veneers, but. Oh my God. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, we could have gone with tuna fish, but I thought actually the caviar would have been a nicer touch. Mmm. But that's just me. That is so delicious. Mmm. Now, Josh, when did you realize you have this love of cooking? As like a little kid, were you always like in the kitchen? What was it? Was your mother a good cook? Tell me. Well, there's a couple stories to that, I guess. I want to hear. First, first, I tried to microwave an egg. I tried to hard boil an egg in the microwave when I was nine years old. Did you ever try and do that? No. Yeah. True story. So I was messing around in the kitchen, and I tried to hard boil an egg in the microwave, and the door to the microwave literally blew open. It sounded like somebody shot a gun. There was, <laughs> there was egg everywhere, uh, and my mom came home, and I was curled up in the corner of the kitchen, scared shit, because I didn't know what happened. Of course. And I, she looked around. She saw egg everywhere. She saw what I tried to do. And I, I was like, I, can't, I think I tried to lie about it or something. I said, whatever. And she goes into the kitchen drawer and she pulls out the manual to the Mac microwave. And the first page of every microwave, you know what it says? Don't cook an egg. Don't try and hard boil an egg. <laughs> <laughs> you, you scramble it, you do a lot of things. But for some reason, the structure of the egg just doesn't work like that. So I learned the hard way not to do that. And then the story goes that I complained about my mom's school lunches one too many times. And she pretty much said to me one day, you know, mm -hmm. fuck you, yeah. kid, make your own lunch. So I've been cooking ever since. Are we allowed to cook her on this podcast? Yes. Is she a uh, shitty cook? My mom's an amazing cook. Okay, I guess, just I guess, I guess I just had you're a better taste cook. and whatever. You're, you're a better chef. <laughs> no, my mom's great. My dad was a great cook, so it all runs in the family. Um, so I started cooking at a young age, and then I always worked. I was always working in some kind of food service establishment. I was a busboy. I was a dishwasher. I was a line cook. I sold bagels at Pomona Hot Bagels in Rockland County, and I put on 20 pounds that I never lost. No, you look thin. You that look thin. You're job. much thinner in real life. Let me tell you something. If you have, uh, if you have just a, a little bit of a weight problem, don't go work at a bakery when you're in high school. <laughs> I don't know. For some reason. All right. I mean, would. life lesson right there. Yeah. That's an important one. And then you went to culinary school. You went to so when you work at a bakery the first week, you can't stop eating everything. After the first week, nothing, nothing looks good anymore. You're like, I'm out of here. Oh, my God. Then I went to Johnson Wales University. Johnson Wales. Well, actually, I went to the University of Maryland, and I did absolutely nothing except... Absolutely nothing except cook for my friends and not go to class and not really maintain a significant GPA. Mm -hmm. So my parents were smart enough to come pick me up and take me on a tour of Johnson Wales University. And I like to say I made a very smart decision at a young age to, after two years in Maryland, which is a great school, party school, having a great time, to transfer to a, um, a trade school, which was Johnson Wales. And I think that was a very smart decision. And it was. And, and having a good time ever since. I've always wanted to travel. And my dad always said, you know, food will take you anywhere. To trade, you can get a job anywhere in the world, and I did just that. So I started cooking, and I got I traveled in Germany, Italy, Spain, and France. And I worked around the country, I worked for free, I got room and board everywhere I went. And I met some great people, and I saw some great places, and I ate some great food. And now I've been back in New York, and Lord Fish Bar, Barry Meat Company, uh, Burger and Barrel, 
I've been fortunate enough to be the sixth time champion of the Burger Bash. Actually, yes. seven times. Ooh. Which is kind of fun. And now, uh, now, now tell me, so at first, because Lord Fish wrote, that was the former canteen, which now, you know, I was a little obs yep. canteen obsessive. So you were part yep. of canteen as I well. Started, I started when I was canteen. I was at Matthews on the Upper East Side, and I came down to Upper Canteen for a few years. And then when that kind of ran its course, um, we switched it over to Lore, and it's been Lore for 15 years, and it's definitely an absolute staple of Soho. It is. It's, it's, it's an amazing, it's amazing what we've been able to accomplish there over the years, and it's a lot of fun. And this you have, what's that kind of nice? Can they see that, everybody? Yes, that's everybody. Yes. Here, flip it down a little bit, so everyone can see. That is amazing. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, the she goes back Margaret, to the next floor. I could have done that, Margaret. Okay, but by the way, I screwed that up. Sorry, no. I, the potato chips and the caviar slipped, totally off, the, slipped <laughs> off the tray. Yes. Okay. Uh, I also want to talk about, so what have, you know, the restaurant industry has taken a hit during COVID. So so, so, why, have restaurants been affected by COVID? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I mean, so I'm saying... You know, I've never known this time. Is that why there's nobody in the restaurant right now? Josh, I'm still oh, an eater, though. So what yes. have you done to pivot in this time? Pivot. If I heard that word pivot... All right, what the fuck? What do you want me to say? No, Josh, listen, what do you listen, do? listen, the truth is, and, and this is... This is it's rough, and it's this upsetting This whole COVID thing is, is doing a number on our whole world and our whole society, and it's very scary, it's very sad. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think there's any question that the restaurant industry has been hit the hardest. That I you know, agree. Restaurant, and it's, hospitality, hotels, music, obviously... Um, it, it, it's a very challenging time, and, and we're getting back on our feet. Um, a lot of the, a lot of my employees are finally getting back to work, um, but Soho in general was a ghost town for a long time. But we're trying to we're trying to build it back up, and now you know now we have to close at ten o'clock. I personally think we're going to shut it down in a couple of weeks if this thing keeps going in the wrong direction. So it's extremely challenging. The new protocols and everything, and twenty five percent. You can you can I can cook for more people in your house than I can cook at from my restaurant right now. I agree, and I think twenty five percent is not going to do it. It's not going to cut it. And we just don't know where it's going, so we're all holding on. Um, as far as pivoting, you know, I've been doing a lot of local catering. I've been I've been doing some cool virtual stuff, um, and you know, trying to keep the restaurants going, get the teams in place as much as we can. But it's scary, you know. I pick a profession that's very dependent on people eating out, and you're not allowed to eat out. I know, and my whole life is going out to dinner. Yes. So I mean, we were big. We would go to Laura all the time. That was my yeah. favorite. Canteen was my favorite restaurant, and then Laura Fish yeah. Bar was literally big for us. Big for us. So it's devastating, and I feel like the restaurant industry is so important to people's mental health. Yes, if you, no, listen, truthfully, listen, nothing feels you know, better you know what, than going what, out. You know what the term restaurant means, right? What does restaurant mean? Tell me. You know that? Anybody know what restaurant No, means? please. Give us restaurant, the actual restaurant definition. Restaurant industry means to restore. Must and it means rest. when you go into a restaurant at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock after a hard day's work, and the music's playing and the lights are right, you kind of like feel a little relaxed. And you have a drink, and you have something to eat, and you're... That's what it's about. You're supposed to be taken care of. I mean, we, we're in business where we take care of everybody else, which is kind of nice. Um, the one thing for me is really nice, at least at the beginning of this day, is I was spending a lot more time at home with my own friends and family, especially my family. I started cooking with my daughter on Instagram. We started with cooking with the capons. And we were just having a good time. Normally, I spent every night at the restaurant. I had a chance to spend some time at home. But now it's kind of like, all right, now we need to get back to some kind of normalcy, um, get back into routine, and start making money again. It's a little scary. It is. It's it is very scary, and I just want it to go away. I mean, I feel like if they come out with a vaccine, not that I'm going to be running to get it first, but I feel like fingers crossed, they, come fingers out crossed they come out with a vaccine so everybody could get their life back to normal. I mean, this is being truthfully the death of New York because I really feel like the no. restaurants are the backbone of the city. Like, it is. It is. It is. So what, what's like, so New York City the greatest city in the world? Yeah. It is the greatest city in the world. Yeah. We have the best food of anybody in the world, and that's thanks to you. So, what are you doing right here, Josh? Um, we are going to make a uh, one of our signature starters at the Barry Bean Company. We're going to do a little ricotta crostini Woo! on some toasted ciabatta. Do you have olive oil? Yes, we have olive oil. Yes, um, sorry, have olive Josh, oil. maybe you're going to have to tell me how to organize my kitchen yes. better, considering. Yes, that's my new profession. I'm going to come to organize people's kitchens. I'm being serious too, by the way. Call me. Two, two, two. What did you say? I oh. said every time I go to somebody's kitchen, they always just say, hey, where should I put this? Where should I put this? And if you're lucky enough to have 18,000 cabinets in the kitchen, <laughs> you won't have that problem. Do you, you have a pepper, do you have a pepper mill? I do. Do you have any kosher salt, right here? Yes, I do. I think we know where it is. Wait, I know I have I'll this one. one. Here's kosher salt. Okay, so yeah. the first thing you do is you always have a small bowl, like a little small bowl. Yes. Do you know what else the good news is? As much as I love my girl Rachel Ray, and I do love Rachel Ray. That's not what I should be getting. No, you need to buy a nice Peugeot pepper mill. I need it. So, by the way, if anybody wants to 
know what to get me for the holidays. Get me a good pepper. Paradise Binance Peugeot Black Pepper Mill. Okay, tell Mark Sr. that's what she should be you getting. Also, you also, whenever you always, whenever you're first going to do it in someone else's kitchen, you should just fill it with all the kosher salt, because these things are annoying. Mm -hmm. You keep a dish, you get, find yourself a nice little dish, maybe for your travels or something like that, and you fill it up with kosher salt. And you leave it out. You leave it out, and you always use it. I do. I, I like a little salt bowl. I like that yes. idea. Because the most important thing when you're cooking is you season every component of the dish. So even though everybody else is seasoned, you know, when you toast on the bread, a little bit of salt and pepper. I like that. The By the way, it was a little warmer out. I know you just got a bread, beautiful new barbecue from Coyote, is that correct? Yes, cool? yes, thank you. So you would grill these, grill off the bread. So I like that. Steak. That's a good Ooh. idea. Josh, I mean, seriously, this is amazing. You are First of all, you're teaching me so many things. Yes. And I hope everybody else is learning this. Jo I mean, Chef Capon, that he's even in my kitchen. I mean, this well, is. Let like, me tell you something. This is supposed he to be entertaining, do yes. educational, and it's just true. A damn good it's time. true. Now, by the way, I could have a cooking show with J Chef Capon. I could just do the commentary, and he could do the cooking. Oh, well, you are a good cook. I happen to be she a great cook. cook. You That's know, I'm Hungarian, so it's in my blood. Are you Hungarian, Josh? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm a Sephardic Jew. I'm Greek. I'm Jewish. I used to okay. be Italian in the former life. Yeah, because there's Hungarian Jews. Before that, I was Mexican. Okay, fine. All right. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a mutt as it, when it comes to dogs. All right, because you're Hungarian. I just want you know, for the place. record, by the way, this is a true story. I like to use, they're called a good chip. You ever see the good chip? Yeah. It's a yes. fancy version of a Pringle, like a, a healthy Pringle. I don't know what happened to it. I had it last time I asked. I went to a bag of potato chips about this big to get you 12 rounds. Oh, to get me beautiful chips? That's they attractive that's ones. That's how, that's how. They are so attractive. Let me ask you a question. Do you leave your butter out of the fridge? Did and you say butter? Are you, talking, are, you talking, are you talking English now? No, she is I English. Am, I am English, so I don't put my butter in the fridge. I didn't notice your accent until you said butter. Ah, uh, that's it. It comes sneaking out with the sun. It sneaks words. out. Mm -hmm. so uh, no, I but I like that. I like that. And people thought I was a freak. People were like, that's unsanitary. Do they think you were a freak just to, just to maintain the way you kept your butter out of the fridge? I mean, that was the beginning. Okay. Oh, then they got to know me. And then they got to know the real chick. Um, oh, shit, check that bread. Oh, jeez. Check the bread. Oh, beautiful. See that? Wow. She got me all distracted over there with the butter. With the butter. With the butter. The butter and the freak talk. Because <laughs> she's a freak. Um, I like that, by the way. That's, that's how we do it in the restaurant. Yes. You just always use when you, warm butter is just the way you cook with it and everything. Your wife cooks? Well, my wife does cook. Yeah. Is she a good cook? You could be honest. My yeah. wife's a very this good cook. This is the circle of She's, no, my wife's yeah. a very good cook. So, see, see how beautiful golden brown those babies are? Was that a prerequisite or you really didn't give a shit? About her cooking? Yeah. Listen, she, she cooks She cooks healthy. She, she cooks, she's gluten and dairy free and I love her. Um, but for the record, she wasn't married. She wasn't gluten and dairy free when I married her. Uh huh. But you know, a lot of things change once you get married, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I but, know. Um, no, I still we love her. that and she takes care of me. And she takes care of That's my kids. Good. I love her, Lori. I love you. Okay, so. That's so nice. Signature appetizer from the Barry Meat Company. If you don't make this at home during the holidays, Mark. I'm going to make it. Josh, I am going to make it. And I'm going to. Obviously. Oh, oh, Jesus. Ooh. If you watch don't make it, watch. Ship it out of mint. Right? Cut my wee fresh mint. <laughs> fresh mint. Just fold over your big nails, right? We don't cut like this. We cut like this, right? Natural barrier, right? Just fold your nails over a little bit. Just like so. Let me take that and watch this. You ready? Take some of this. These are my favorite ingredients, by the way. I know, we're cut them. Okay, you take this. Very seasonal, right? We cook with the seasons over here. I love it. I love it. If you're not serving this at Thanksgiving, and I'm talking to you, and I'm talking to you, and I'm talking to you, if this is not a little starter when you're people at the house for Thanksgiving, I'm not going to talk to you. Okay, okay. Well, I want you to still talk to me. I'll still talk to you. That's right. I've been, living, I've been living in Jersey for three years. How? Time. Why have we not been together? I you know, know. I'm, I'm big in Tenafly. I don't know. Even though I live in Englewood. Were you with Tenafly? Yes, since 1991. I mean, so the way you said it, it sounded like you were headlining Tenafly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was headlining in Tenafly. Lots of, you know, lots of stories. I was there forever. Why did you move to that? Englewood, because I wanted this old house to renovate. Don't ask me what possessed me to do that, but, you know. Like we were saying before, by the way, about the butter. And, and seriously, when you go to a restaurant, no, I, I say very seriously, when you go to a restaurant, you can judge a lot by a restaurant just by the bread and butter service. Yes. And they serve you ice cold butter and ice cold bread. I say get the hell out of there. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't think that's really, I don't think that's really setting the tone for a good meal. Yes. No, Pack no. your bags if the bread and butter is cold. Yeah. I mean, hit, yeah. hit the road, Jack. Yeah, hit the road, Jack. Wait, I just want to ask you obviously, your restaurants are your favorite Hold on, Because how long does it take to throw some bread in the oven, take the butter at room temperature, and if you want to get a little crazy, 
You can put a little, little roasted garlic or herbs, or whatever you want in the butter, or maybe some or, uh, olive oil or some herbs. But we're just gonna take some honey, okay? This would be breakfast in Italy, by the way. This yes. alone, just ricotta and honey, and every bite, right? Ooh, every bite, beautiful. Every stuff. Ooh, this is reason alone to move to Italy. Oh, this right? reason. Ooh. Then we're gonna take some nuts, a few cream pans. And by the way, don't be afraid to toast your nuts. Just be careful when you toast your nuts. Watch <laughs> right. with the nut toast. For obvious, for obvious reasons, but. Toast your pecans, chopped pecans, and some olive oil and some salt and pepper. Makes it very aromatic. Okay. Then we take some pomegranates, which are in season right now. Ooh, so look how beautiful. Oh, wow, so this looks so gorgeous. Pomegranates, because they stain everything. Gorgeous. Okay. okay, boom. Then we take the chopped mint. Ah. Oh, I don't know about you, amazing. but this is beginning to, to look. This is beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Christmas. It is. It yeah. is. Really look up. Come on, it's like a freaking Christmas tree out of flowers. Oh my God! I'm trying to a beautiful thing. You know, I'm a shik. You know, I'm like a Jewish girl, but I'm really a shik. Thank thing. you. Oh How God. beautiful! I don't care if I get this all over my face and in my teeth because well, I know it's gonna I know be worth it. I will have it in my show. By the way, you should have a show. I'm about to leave because these are not bounty. And they ain't bounty, they ain't paper towel. You can't get anything at yeah. the Yeah, bounty! Mark and Joseph needs the paper towel. Wait, are you telling me if the butcher is right. cold, the bread is cold, have you ever literally walked out of a restaurant or asked to tell to speak to the chef? Not really. I have. I, I, I am not very, um, uh, what's the right word? I'm not very... Uh, Aggressive? I, I'm easy. If I go out and somebody's doing the cooking, I'm fine. I don't send many things back. Um, it's just not worth it to me. Mm -hmm. there, was, there was one instance where we ordered a lobster dish, and there's an expression that you never cook a dead lobster. Which is true. Yes. If you ever cook a lobster, lobster should be alive. Yes. Meat, if the lobster's dead, the meat literally starts to decompose. Oh, oh. No, it's just, it's just, and you can tell when you, if you ever get a lobster and the meat is mushy, oh. you don't eat it. It should, yes. be like, it should be like shrimp. It should have a certain texture to it, which is why you eat lobster. And I got a dish. It was, it was a very expensive dish, and it was just, it just wasn't right. Like I couldn't. It wasn't like a steak being a little overcooked where you could yeah. still eat it. I didn't feel comfortable eating this dish. I think it's the only time where I said, hey, listen, honestly, it's fine. I just, you know. I'm not gonna spend eight dollars or whatever is on a lobster, but more than I could eat it anyway. So yeah. But um, even when people come to the Barry Meat Company and they, they all say, "Hey, this is not medium rare; it's medium, or, or it's, it's a little over," I'm like, "Do me a favor. Why don't you cut it in the middle? Just cut it in the middle, because they cut the end, and the end's a little closer to the well. Then they cut the middle, and they're like, oh, it's fine. So I, I'm not afraid to tell people, hey, listen, personal animal gave his life. We just cook the thing nicely. You got to be a little more sensitive. <laughs> you say that. <laughs> no, it's true. All right. It's true. I like that. I never had anybody say that to me, but I love that one. Wait, what is one of your other favorite places in the city to eat? Um, uh, I'm a creature of habit. Uh, What's your top Mexican? Well, top Mexican, El Toro Blanco, obviously, but El Toro Blanco is closed right now. Mm -hmm. um, but that was one of my favorite spots that we had. Uh, good Mexican, Atlas doing really good stuff. Cosme's good, but a little highbrow. Uh, Tacomi does really good stuff. Mm -hmm. No, I've never even eaten at Cosme. Have you eaten at Cosme? Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. well, right now. Cosme's pretty good. It, it's not, it's... it's not traditional, traditional Mexican, but it's, very, it, it's fun. It's, it's a good it's okay. a program. Um, I love Asian, I love dim sum. What about, what about Italian? Italian, uh, my buddy Sal's place, uh, Bar Primi is very good. Yeah. Uh, Michael White's not right. Yeah, by the way, Bar, the yeah, Bar Primi, yes. Okay. I'm grabbing something else over here. Okay. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Oh, I'm taking back my warm intro. This looks amazing. What's this now, Josh? What are we having now? This is this? Now, how do you get a chicken lollipop? What, what part of the chicken is this? These Listen, little... Margaret, this is the first time you invited me to the kitchen. <laughs> I'm not telling you all my secrets day one over here. I mean, what are we going to eat? Who are we going to starve to death? So we're getting close to Thanksgiving, everybody. And I know I know it's going to look a little different this year, and your house is not probably going to be as full as yes. it normally is. But let's remember, we all do have something to be thankful for, even during this crazy time. But I deep fry turkeys. I recommend deep frying turkeys. It's a great way to cook a turkey. You have that beautiful kitchen out there. Yes. You can deep fry a turkey. But if you're going to deep fry a turkey, you're going to go through all that effort, and you have that vat of hot oil. Before you deep fry the turkey, deep fry some chicken lollipops, one of our signatures at Barry Meat Company. This is the greatest chicken wing you've ever had in your entire life. Call me. Call me and I'll get you some. Now we're just going to take some of this little homemade honey soaked soy garlic sauce. We're going to go like that. Wow. Now, as David Burke would say, if you have two hands, you might as well use them. Is that what David Burke says? Yes. Is that what he said? If you haven't saw you work with one hand, he's like, so why do you use your other hand? You got two. So these are, are you, you do you, do you, you think you have any kids? Do I have kids? Yes. Are they home? No, they're they're older and work. Who was that little guy I saw there? That's mine. That's her kid. That's less my son. We're, we're just like, we love kids all over the place. We'll take anybody's kids. You know, off the street. They want to come. So these are, these are kind of like one of my signature things. 
They're, my dad actually told me how to make these a long time ago. My dad just passed away two weeks ago. So. So, I know, so sad. So, okay, love you, Dad. We're still with you, buddy. See, he's everywhere we go. He's like my co-pilot for life, as I like oh, to say. Oh, wow, that's so sweet. Anyway, he told me how to make these years ago, and now they're one of our signatures at, at Laura and Barry, wherever we go. They're just the, they're the chicken wings. They're like the wingettes. The wingettes. Yeah, when you pull out one bone, Adorable. you get this little lollipop, which is the best bite of chicken you've ever had in your entire life. I guarantee it. Because it's just perfect chicken meat surrounded by chicken skin. And if that doesn't get you going, then we just can't be friends, can we? No. no. I mean, oh, Jesus. Listen, we're eaters. Yes. We're known well, eaters. No. I'm a known yeah. eater. So watch, you take those. Also, Thanksgiving coming up, I'm going to take some toasted peanuts. Right? And first I'm going to put some little chopped cilantro over here. A little color, right? Cook with herbs, everybody. Cook with herbs, yes? Yes. If you live in a house, or you li even if you live in an apartment, have some pots of herbs on the windowsill. i got to get the herbs. Herb I don't have herbs yet. have an herb garden in the backyard. I'm going to do an herb garden. The only thing this is missing is like a little yuzu ranch dressing as we serve them at a Barry Bee Company, but these are incredible. But just be careful with mint, by the way. If you do have an herb garden, be careful with mint. Why? Either of you know? $20 no, 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 no. What? Anybody? It kills the cat. It's a weed. It's a weed. That's right. Miriam Finkel. She doesn't only sell houses. It's a weed. It'll take over the whole garden. Right. Did you learn that from me? Yes. Mint, mint is a weed, and it will take over your whole herb garden. So if you do have mint and you have an herb garden, put your mint in a separate pot so it stays continued. I love mint. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, who doesn't love mint? This, by favorite. the way, this is so beautiful. The guys who are listening on audio can't see this, so go quick to YouTube. But this, these little lollipops, done. Okay, hold on. Oh, um, those are cute. Right now, we know people can't go to restaurants. So what are the most important things that people have in their kitchen? Like, what are the essentials people need? Very good question. So I've, yes. always said, I've always said, and I'm not supposed to say this, but even before the pandemic, I always tell people, entertain at home. Mm. I mean, going out to a restaurant is obviously special, it's obviously very nice, but you have a beautiful house here, you have a kick-ass backyard, you have this beautiful brand new kitchen, entertain at home. It's more cost-effective, and again, I shouldn't say this, but sometimes it can be more fun too. You know, restaurants, obviously you go out and it, it, it's a great experience, and it, you get to get see, and you get people running around, and the music is great, but you know, when you make a reservation in a restaurant, we want you to get out of there two and a half hours on Saturday it's night true. Right? when you yeah, turn the table. True. And that's okay too. You have to understand that. I made a reservation at Nobu 25 years ago for my girlfriend's birthday at the time. And at 7 o'clock, they told me we need the table back at 8.30. And I was really taken aback by that. But the truth is now I realize you got to turn these tables. But entertain at home, invite some people over, and put on a show. Like right now, look at this kitchen you have. Yes. You have, I, I, and by the way, when you invite people thank to you. dinner, it doesn't mean they have to be sitting formally at the dining room table. No. But look, we just made some ricotta crostini. We made yes. some cabaret I'd like to send out waves of food. So regardless of the pandemic, entertain at home, entertain in your backyard. You need a few good things. You need a bunch of mixing bowls, some cheek pans, some nice platters, some nice bowls, uh, some booze block cutting boards are great what, to have. What pans do you suggest? Because I threw out a lot of my pans when I was redoing my kitchen. What pans should I buy, Joe? Um, I mean, look, all clad is always safe to go with. All clad is a great pan. I have all clad, but what, what about this non-stick stuff? Do I need non-stick? You need non-stick when you're cooking eggs and stuff like that. You don't need non-stick all the time. Okay. But just make sure you take care of them. Treat them well. A couple cast iron pans are the right way to go. Okay. That's all you need. You need a, a, you need a whole knife block with 34 knives? No. Any chef will tell you you need a chef's knife, a paring knife, and a serrated knife. But have a knife block on the thing just so you have it. You know, I a, need a knife bowl, block. Bowl of salt, a lot of different vinegars. I like to cook a lot of vinegars. You should have, to me, I always like to have a bowl. Find yourself a beautiful bowl with oranges and lemons and limes and tomatoes and onions and fresh garlic and all that kind of stuff because you use that stuff all the time. And I always I like say cook, cook with citrus. Citrus has a ton of flavor, very healthy to eat with. And the same thing with vinegars. But if you ever, I always tell people, if you have one of those plastic yellow lemons or plastic green limes in your refrigerator, you have yes. one of those? No, no, no. Because if you did, I'd punch you in the face. <laughs> you know, I'd be standing right there, I would punch it's you in okay. the face. It's okay. I would take my wood mixing bowl and I would say, I'm out of here. No, no, no. We're very no. fresh. We're very fresh people. Yeah, Unfortunately, be. I don't, because the refrigerator is new, you could say I didn't stock it up yet. No, but the truth is, how lazy are you that you have to buy a plastic yellow I'm lime in the refrigerator? Exactly. I don't know what exactly. lime, lemon juice. So, you know, Bowls of lemons, fresh lime, lime. citrus, tomatoes, red onions, garlic, all that kind of stuff. So you're gonna cut an avocado? Show me how to cut the avocado so the best way. First of all, be firm to the touch, right? Like, as someone used to say, There's like, a pit in the middle. Okay. Let the knife go all the way around the pit. Go like that. See how pretty that is? Yes, go beautiful. Like that. Okay. Look, see, see? Look at my mask. <laughs> <laughs> On my bead stein mask strap, by the way. Beat my stein. daughter's making these straps. Company called Beatstein. Yes. And what's nice about it is uh, is Alyssa Epstein, by the way, who started the company. She's not only making making cool mask straps, 
But a lot of these kids, including my daughter, have a sense of uh, responsibility. They have some place to go. They're social. They're a little bit outside. They do. And, you know, they're a little lost during this pandemic. My daughter didn't know what to do with herself. And now she's got a sense of responsibility. She's getting paid. She's making money. She's able to be a little social, which is nice. I love you. And watch how he says this. Can you, can you bring me a spoon, please? Doing three of these, you do the same task all at once. You don't finish one and then do the other, right? And by the way, is that, is that it? So you just turn it. Beautiful. That That's the one trick I do now. Yes, Why don't we put it in there? Now, if you want to save no, an here's... avocado, don't you have to uh, keep the seed in it so it doesn't Some people do around? say that. That's a, what? My mom would say that's a bubble mites. <laughs> a bubble <All> right. mites. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want oxygen to get on it, what you don't want. Okay, now what do you do now, right? You do it like this. You take a knife and very carefully, just to the skin, I'm going all the way down to the skin. You score oh, it. Like wow, that's the way you I put an scoring avocado. I'm it, right? I'm going to do all those. And what you're going to do, Margaret, is as I do this, you're yes. going to take the spoon. And you're going to scoop it. See that? Wow, that, see, I was, always, I would always take it out and then chop it. I'm a, no. I'm a, I'm a stupid. You're not okay. stupid, but we can make <laughs> a saving a step. So grab that spoon. Okay, I'm going to scoop it. I love it. So you score it, people, inside the shell. I'm just saying that because for the listeners, because a lot of people listen. So are you going to people's house? I mean, we could do uh, catering with the capons. We're doing. I've been doing some local catering. I've been doing some local uh, exclusive catering, if you will, because it helps me Because you're fancy. Days. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, it's pretty fancy. You know, it's usually for friends and family that I know. Um, we're doing it very safe. We're very responsible, all that kind of stuff. A lot of outdoor stuff. But people still want to be able to entertain home because they can't go out. And obviously, if you have an important occasion to celebrate you want to do it right so yes i've been doing some of that stuff which is kind of fun i've been doing some stuff in the virtual space you need to finish the oh my god i'm, I'm nice. on bad behavior we we're not making a lobster cob we're making a shrimp cob oh sorry but i lied obviously, you know, shrimp that's okay. lobster shrimp grilled chicken uh you put crab in there but obviously we know what's great about a cob is the crisp remain the creaminess of the avocado some fresh potatoes i like to do a soft bowl like you see the color of those yolks yeah that's beautiful the color of those yolks don't wow. overcook your eggs. Bring your eggs to a boil six minutes and then run them under ice water. Okay? And you want those eggs because those eggs are going to be creamy as opposed to dry and they're going to enrich the dressing, as I like to say. Is that now, like watch. a medium boiled egg, six minutes? I would say medium, yeah. Say okay, medium. six minutes medium. How long a hard boiled egg? Twelve. How do long you, running? Do you put the, put it in when the, but do, do you put it in when the water comes to a boil? No. Or you can put it in from no, cold? It's cold, cold. Okay, cold, fine. Cold, cold. Yes. Okay, that's because that's like... As far as root vegetables, if something grows underneath the ground like a potato, you start in cold water. If something grows above the ground like cauliflower, like broccoli, you start in hot water. Oh, no. so that's... Oh, all listen. these things I learned in culinary school oh. just pouring out of my mouth. Oh, like, my God. Oh. Who would know? I, I didn't know that. know that. What's most important, listen, when you're entertaining, Always be ready. There's a term in the, in the restaurant business called mise en place. You know what mise en place means? Mise en place? Is mise that term? Place? Anybody speak French? No. Mise, mise en place, place sounds very German. That's so a mise en place French. is a French term that they teach you in culinary school. And what it means, it's everything in its proper place. So I'm going to make a lobster cup salad. Right before I came here, I quartered some beautiful cherry tomatoes. I took care of my eggs. I poached some shrimp. And I made this incredible charred red onion vinaigrette. Make like your own good. vinaigrettes. Do not buy vinaigrettes, okay? Great olive oils, extra virgins, sherry vinegar, red wine vinegar. Uh, white wine vinegar. I got some chopped basil in here and I charred some onions in the oven for about an hour and a half to bring out all that natural sweetness. Fancy. Onions, onions, when they're raw or sharp, this is going to be, this is, this is a home run right here. And I do have some bacon in the oven because everything tastes better with bacon. Especially when it's warm, okay? And you want it to be warm. So, we got our romaine, we got our avocado. So, all we do is this, watch. In a matter of that. Cherry tomatoes over the top. We're going to take that hard boiled egg over the top. Oh my God. Yeah, you're going to make this in the next 48 hours. You, sh you spill some shrimp all over the place. <laughs> okay. Some shrimp. You throw those in there, right? And then I got to go grab that bacon. By the way, this bowl, I'm not gonna, I don't go anywhere without this bowl because the bowl was part of the presentation. Yes, I yes. need a good Remember bowl like that. By the way, pepper mill for the Marge and a good yes. salad bowl, wooden salad bowl. How do you how do you clean, how do you clean a good salad? Don't soak it. No soap, no soap. Crumbled bacon over the top. Ooh. No soap. Most importantly, it's warm. That bacon is warm. We eat with textures. You don't want that bacon mm. fat. Then you take your Ray Cherry Ray pepper mill. <laughs> okay. we, love our, we love our Ray Ray. Okay. I mean, listen. Crack black pepper. Okay. Mm. Always a sprinkle of kosher salt, just for shits and giggles from above. We from take above. that vinaigrette. Look at the color on that. You got to get the color on this. Wow, that is some beautiful wow. vinaigrette. That's beautiful. How, how do you what do you this, do? How do you this, stir it? Look, look at the texture. Look at that. See that? It's chunky. Beautiful. It's chunky. It's got basil. It's got red <laughs> onion. It's got red more vinegar. The dog's <laughs> walking. The dog is so excited. She loves shrimp and bacon. 
Now, I always overcook my shrimp. You do? I do. I don't, don't know over, how don't I over, don't that. How hard is that? Don't overcook your proteins. It's not worth it. Just, Let me just ask you, Josh, because I get very irritated. We eat with one friend of mine. I'm going to say his name, Dave Jensen, really annoying. And he wanted. You know Dave Jensen? Yeah, do you know Dave oh, Jensen? Oh, boy, that guy's trouble with a capital T. I know, I know. Wait a minute. No, and you I'm know just what? kidding. For the record, I have no idea who Dave Jensen is. I know, I know. I'm Full just disclosure, gonna say, I have no idea who Dave Jensen is. Yeah, do you know what it is? He orders his meat well done, like burnt, like shoe leather. You know how much that pisses me off? Does that piss you off when people order their meat? Listen, I, I'm not going to tell, I'm, I'm well tell you. Done. I'm not going to tell you how to eat your meat, but I will tell you one thing. If you do like a well done order, medium well, not well done. I agree. There's a big difference between medium well and well done. Well done in the restaurant, they forget about it. They just forget about it. It's magic with it. It's going to watch it. Then you go like this. Mm. And if this does not get you excited, we can't be friends because all the dressing. It is. We're friends. And it's, I'm very all, excited. All the dressing. Like this, this is an incredible gorgeous. salad. It's gorgeous. It's a party. It's you, a party. You, you clean as you go. No one married me for my cleaning abilities, just saying. Josh, this is a very hard question. God forbid it's your last meal. Oh, my last meal is about four days long. No, no, no. God forbid it's your last meal. If I knew it was my last meal? If you knew it was your last it, meal, what would, you, what would you have? We got forks? Yes, we have forks. But Josh, tell me. God forbid it was your last meal, what would it be? It's pizza, it's dumplings, it's fried chicken, it's prime rib, Ooh. it's really well done french fries. Oh, french fries um, are my favorite. It's linguine with vongles. Look, look how just totally funny. randomly. When this is beautiful. Up, like a bowling, that. like a bowling alley. Each fork is pointing yeah. in the right direction. Yeah, oh, I mean, that's amazing. Really pretty. Look at mm. This is so good. Delish. What was your big girl, well, you're the big boy. What was your big boy panties moment that you realized like you had to like pull them up one day? Like what, what was like a pivotal moment in your career? I was about 17 years old. Uh huh. I, I was working at a local diner. Mm hmm And I was called Our Gang In. In Pomona, Pomona New York, I was called Our Gang In. I was a busboy, mm -hmm. right? And it was a Saturday morning. It was about 9 o'clock in the morning, and the lead line cook did not show up to work yet, right? It was 9.30, the lead line cook did not show up. It was 10 o'clock. We're getting ready to open for brunch, and the owner's freaking out, where's the, where's the cook? You need, you need the cook, right? I knew from the night before that the cook was hammered, because they were all drinking at the bar, mm -hmm. with the bartenders and the waitress and everything. Mm -hmm. There was no way this guy was showing up to work. He was hung over like a pig. He was probably passed out somewhere in the gutter. So finally, at 11 o'clock, I cook at home, I cook pancakes, mm -hmm. I cook omelets, and I, I'm looking at the owner who's freaking out because he can't open the doors. I said, let me do it. I kept saying, let me do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. I said, it's pancakes, it's omelets, I can do it. And he was a little hesitant because he says, what are you doing? You don't have to cook, you're, you're, you're a posh you're a kid, you're a busboy. Mm -hmm. I said, you have no choice, let me do it. And finally, by 11 o'clock when the doors had opened, he had no choice, he was all right, go back there and do it. And I started whipping up omelets, I was making French toast, I was making pancakes, I was doing like that little nice little orange garnish on the wow. plate. Wow! And I was touching tables, and everybody was having a good time, and I was a new cook. And I never looked back. That was, oh. Did he get fired? That was it, you took over? I don't know, I moved on, maybe he came back. That guy's probably still there if he's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> I love that story. But what's your most entrepreneurial advice? Not like get a business plan, take a loan, do to do like the nitty gritty, like real advice you could give someone who wants to be in your industry. Mm -hmm. I want to be in my industry. Mm -hmm. If you want, to, I'll tell you right now. If you want to be in my industry, when I say this to people on, on interviews when we hire them, if you generally don't have hospitality in your blood and want to and enjoy taking care of the people, you're in the wrong business. And I get, by the way, that a lot of my servers, a lot of, a lot of my young staff, this is not what they want to be doing. Okay, they're mm -hmm. putting themselves to school. They're they're they want to be actresses, musicians, um, starting their own business. So I do accept that. For a lot of people, this is a temporary gig. The problem is they do well with it. And they probably stay in it too long. But if you're getting my business from a real career point of view, you can't fake it. You can't fake coming over here. And I was running around all morning before I got here. And I love this. If you don't know what I love, and obviously it shows. It's true. Hanging out with you girls this afternoon and everybody's eating. Like you told me, two people. I said bullshit. Two people. You know, the girls are here. We feed them. Mm -hmm. And if your husband walks over, we feed him. And then, like that's what you do, but but if you generally don't have a, a love that makes you feel good about taking other people, care of other people, you're in the wrong business. Because we work nights, we work holidays, we work weekends. You know, whenever I, was, I remember the, the best question a, a chef ever asked me on a job interview. He said to me, this was at the New York Athletic Club in 1984. I don't even know. He said to me, "How do you feel about working while the party's going on?" I said, I took it back. I said, it's a very good question. I said, the truth is, I always have a good time. Mm -hmm. I, I generally like to make sure mm -hmm. everybody else is having a good time. Because if everybody else is having a good time, I have a good time. If I know somebody needs a drink or somebody said, I, I can't have a good time. 
And maybe it's an OCD thing. I don't know. But I like to make sure everybody else has a good time. That's amazing advice. You know, your personality really is infectious. Funny about it, you're infectious. You have an infectious energy, which is so impressive. I, I think, think that's you what probably you're so need successful. that to survive in your own shoe, too, because there's a lot of crazy characters. So, what percentage? Because we yes, I always say this. Is about 50% delusional to 50% determined. That's been like the measure of their success. What would you say your percentages are? A thousand percent delusional. <laughs> I love it. I love that. Woo! What was your question? Delusional versus what? Determined. determined. No, I think I, I, look, I think you have to have a nice balance of the two. Mm -hmm. I think you have to really be determined. You know what you want. You have to enjoy it. My dad always said, if you, it's a classic cliche. If you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. We all work pretty hard. Yes. We work pretty hard. But I think if you generally... I have a friend of mine in the mortgage business that works harder than anybody that I know, especially during this pandemic, but he hates his job. He's like, look, it's a he's job. Not happy. Money, but it's like, he's downstairs in his basement all day long, you know, getting crushed by people and trying to make people happy. He's like, I don't love what I do. He goes, but I do it. And I work really hard. Mm -hmm. And I make a living at it. And he always says to me, you're very lucky to generally love what you do and be able to be around people that you enjoy. I have a ton of athletes that come through the restaurant. I have a ton of celebrities, but I treat them, my, my, my secret to my success because you treat everybody like a celebrity. You treat everybody with the respect that they deserve no matter what. I, you know what? I love that. Thank you so, so much for coming, Terry. I'm so excited. We're going to keep your eye out for cooking with KCOM because you know what? That's going to be happening. Because coming is, soon. Coming soon because he is unbelievable. Josh Capon. By the way, thank you for having me. This was a thank very you. nice. I really didn't know what to expect. Nice. And I had a good time. You I did. Josh, tell, tell everybody where to find you, where they should follow you. Uh, you can follow me at Chef Capon. Uh, at Little Fish Bar at Barry Me Company. You can DM me if you have any cooking questions, any requests. You want me to cater in your house, let me know, and we'll have some fun. All right, we're here for you, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep on cooking. You can follow me, obviously, at The Real Margaret Josephs. And me at The Life of Mrs. B. And us at Caviar Dreams Tuna Fish Budget on Instagram and YouTube. Um, no.